Welcome to r slash nuclear revenge. It's a place where we share stories of all forms of extreme revenge. And today we have three great stories. So subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. D parks in reserved handicap spot in front of our home. The second story. I made a Christmas present for a-hole. The third story. Sales manager effed up and blames me. The first story is. Park in our disabled spot. Enjoy selling your home. So, my little sister, who's the sweetest girl in the world, is 12 years old but can't walk or communicate. Her mental age is around 6 months. She obviously cannot attend a regular school, but since we live in a big city, there's a wonderful school for kids like her. Even though we don't own a car, since we don't need one, we got the city to put up signs in front of our house, designating a 4 meter spot for wheelchair pickup and drop off for her school bus every morning and afternoon. The signs went up perhaps two years ago, and after the first week we never really had any issues, since most of our neighbors are wonderful and totally understanding of our designated spot. Sadly, the neighborhood is gentrifying, and we're getting more self-centered people with their Mercedes-Benz or Audis honking while my sister gets loaded onto her school bus, which takes around four minutes but blocks our little street, which really peeves us off, as well as the other sane people who witness it. Naively, we thought this would be the extent of our unpleasant interactions. In September, we woke up like on any other Monday morning to find a shiny BMW parked in our disabled spot. It wasn't just partially in it, it was positioned perfectly to take up the entire spot. It was usually parked about 20 meters south on our street, so we knew it belonged to a neighbor a few doors down. We did all the basics in this type of situation. We took a picture, took down the license plate, and called the police to report it. The cops came by within the hour and wrote a big fat ticket. I believe it was for $700, but don't quote me on it. Anyways, it was a significant amount. At around noon, a smug, angry guy came knocking on my door. I had the day off from school and was home on my own. It was obvious that it was the owner of the car, so I made a quick decision to record the conversation, or screaming match, on my phone. I opened the door, and before I could say a thing, the D lays into me. I'm a 16-year-old guy, and he's in his mid-40s. Midlife crisis, maybe. He accuses me of all things ranging from putting up those signs this morning to frame him to being racist. He was East Asian, I believe, but we have a really diverse community. He goes on to say that disabled spots shouldn't even be a thing, that it's always empty, totally shooting himself in the foot based on his previous comments, that we should pay for his undeserved ticket, that it isn't even an inconvenience since the spot next to his was free and my sister could just get on the bus from there, blah blah blah. Once he finished, I said okay and shut the door on his furious face. He rang the doorbell another five times before storming off. To my satisfaction, the recording caught everything fairly clearly. In the evening, I told my parents what happened and gave my dad a copy of the recording. We have a pretty tight-knit community for the most part, and there is a neighborhood Facebook group with around 3,000 members. My dad decided to post a summary of what had happened, along with the recording and a picture of the car in our spot on the page. There was immediately uproar with people saying they would fight back or whatever. We were humbled by the feeling that our community was standing up for us, but we didn't think anything would come of it. The next day I leave the house to go to school and walk by the guy's car, back in his normal spot, and notice that the front right tire was deflated. Upon closer inspection it was slashed. As I said, our community is tight-knit, but I can't say I expected anything like this to happen. The guy must have seen the Facebook post, because he didn't come back to our house to complain or accuse us of anything. The following weeks were sweet. Whenever I saw him in public, people would go up to him and remind him that he was an SH human being. A bit harsh in my opinion, but they weren't my words. In November, his house had a for sale sign in the window. The house market had also gone down by a bit. I'm always kind of curious about how much houses similar to ours are selling for, compared to how much we paid for ours in 2011 so I knew what he paid for it in July. Once I saw the for sale sign, I rushed home and checked the local housing listings, and lo and behold he was selling for $90,000 less than what it was going for in July. He really wanted to get out of our neighborhood. While his crime wasn't nearly worth $90,000, I must say that I don't feel bad. Worst case scenario, he sells that obnoxious car of his, which would easily cover the lost money. Let's just say that we haven't had a single car parked in my sister's spot since. The second story is, they stole Christmas presents from my foster kids, so I stole the Christmas season from them. My wife and I once lived in an apartment complex in our first year and a half of marriage. So it was a bi-weekly routine to take a very quick trip to the main office, drop off a mislabeled package, and head home. Jump a year into the future and we have a home and are taking care of foster kids that have just recently entered the system. We desperately wanted them to have a good Christmas since life has dealt them so many bad hands. Just once I want them to experience a Christmas where they feel more valued than drugs and get more out of holidays than sexual abuse thanks to their biological family. We ordered the gifts off of a site we used to order more frequently from, but haven't ordered gifts from there in a while. We found the perfect gifts. They were on sale, so that allowed us to get more for them and everything was falling right into place. But then it happened. 
A day later we checked our email, and to our horror, we realized the computer saved our old address, and even though we originally put in the right address, the computer auto-filled the rest of the information. That sent the packages to the old apartment complex. We called the store. They wouldn't help us at all. So we called the apartment complex to try to get ahead of this, before they were delivered. This was all going to go well, until the current resident of our old apartment completely overreacted to the news. Out of four boxes that were delivered to that complex, he only returned one and threatened, if this happens again, I'm going to destroy these gifts. Turns out he had all the packages and were keeping them knowing full well that we live fairly close and that they were for foster kids. We called and contacted the complex multiple times and they had the same sad news. Either the guy wouldn't return a call or he would just angrily hang up. So I took a drive past my old apartment. I saw what car he drove and then I saw that he obviously had some sort of family. I had one of two choices. I thought of letting it go. I thought about the spirit of Christmas and how the new year was a mark of a new start. Then I thought of him bringing the stolen gifts to other people because this scum dweller wouldn't buy gifts for the ones around him either. This is when things turned dark in my mind. He tried to take gifts away from foster kids who have had their home taken from them. Why not take Christmas away from him? Why not take away his home? Whatever he's experienced in life to lead to this event, I want him to suffer even more for this injustice. In a right mindset, I talked to a cop friend of mine and there wasn't much I could do without going to small claims court and spending a good bit of money. The plan executed as follows. I parked on a hilltop overlooking the complex. Luckily, the apartment is close to the base of the hill, so I had a perfect spot to observe. After I waited for the guy to come home, I made a note of his vehicle to confirm that was indeed his car and he went to the store. I picked up several dozens of eggs and a can of spray paint and went back home to await nightfall. I went back out around 2 a.m. I pre-mixed the eggs and kept all the shells. I went to a more secluded spot away from the complex where I knew I could park and find a route that didn't have any sort of security cameras. I snuck up carrying a bowl of pre-beat eggs, the shells, and the spray paint in my hoodie pocket. I carefully laid the ingredients down that would be used to concoct my revenge. I was shaking. I'm still shaking as I write this. I pulled out the spray paint that I shook before getting out of the car to reduce noise. I used the paint to write home wrecker on the hood of his car. Then I poured the eggs from the roof and poured towards the back as to not let the mixture ruin the message on the hood. I laid the eggshells around the car. I placed a note on the bush outside of his door that read fertilize these eggs in hopes that his wife or partner would see it. Then I took a pocket knife and flattened the driver front and passenger rear tire since some insurance will cover it if all four get slashed and I wanted to do something a spare tire wouldn't be able to fix. I went to flatten a third tire but I saw headlights of someone heading into the complex so I had to bail. I made my way back carefully to my car and drove off. I don't know how all of this had an effect but I'm afraid to go back again and check on things without raising suspicion. So far no one has reached out to me to ask about the incident. I made it out and Merry Christmas. I wanted to drive by and take a picture but the car is gone. The shells are still littered on the ground but it looks like the car was towed. There were also remains of a broken coffee mug at the base of his door. I like to imagine that he walked out, saw it and spiked it into the ground out of anger. Or maybe his wife saw it and chucked it at his dumb head. I want to imagine that it destroyed his home so he can get a taste of what a broken home feels like. Just like how these foster kids have had to experience this time of year their whole lives. I told my family that someone had stolen or destroyed the packages and they're all chipping in to shower the kids with gifts so they will not be without. Of course, I didn't tell them about the gifts or the plan of revenge on their behalf, but that a great gift I will have received this year is that some sense of justice has been fulfilled. The best gift is being able to give these kids a Merry Christmas and the look on their faces when they get all these gifts. And the last story is, manager thought my job role was unnecessary, finds out the hard way it wasn't. About 20 years ago, I was a sales engineer supporting sales reps at D-Bag Tech Company, DTC. A new sales manager joins the team. He was a former coworker from a prior job, a petty little man. Prior, we were peers. Now he was a manager over the sales reps I supported. I had a separate chain of command. He was not my manager, but felt he should be. He was resentful of the power that sales managers in this new company had. In an attempt to show me up, he closed a very large deal with A Banking Company, ABC, and did so without any involvement from the sales engineers. Just one sales rep. He gloats about it publicly, talks about how we don't even need sales engineers, the whole nine yards. Later, the manager calls me in a panic and we talk with the customer. The sales rep and the rep sales manager totally F things up and sold the customer an incompatible set of solutions. I say that the customer could exchange one bit of stuff for another bit of stuff. Everything would work and they're roughly the same price, so nobody would lose any money. But the sales manager doesn't want to do it because admitting he effed up would make him look bad and he bees at me for bringing up price because that's supposed to be the rep's job. He calls my boss and SH is all over me. My boss took his side and SH is all over me too, so I'm like F you I quit. I sent a very lengthy detailed letter to HR explaining how the sales rep effed up, lied to the customer and how the sales manager and my boss tried to make me the scapegoat instead of trying to fix it. 
which would have been easy and made everyone happy. I move on, get a new job, do other things. At some point I'm chatting with an old friend from DTC and he mentions they effed up a huge deal that they spent a year on. I'm still bitter about the D-bag sales rep manager and my a-hole boss, so I post about it on a forum a bunch of investors use. The stock crashed $13 the next day. This will be important later. I find out about ABC is suing DTC for effing up the deal. The deal that the D-bag sales rep manager effed up and tried to pin on me. I reach out to ABC, send them a copy of the letter I sent to HR, in which I detailed precisely how badly DTC effed them over. I talk with one of their lawyers, and he's very happy, especially the part in my letter where I describe how the sales rep lied to ABC. DTC subpoenas me for a deposition. I have to tell DTC's lawyers everything that I told ABC's lawyers. Lawyer stuff. The day before the deposition, DTC sues me directly. Remember DTC's stock crashing? They're suing me for bad-mouthing the company and attempting to short their stock, which I wasn't. However, there's a twist. Because DTC is suing me directly, I don't have to say SH to them at the deposition. Their preparation for the lawsuit goes completely out the window. They know they're effed because they read the letter I sent to HR, but they don't know how effed because they don't know what else I know or what I've told ABC's lawyers. Additionally, because they never deposed me, that can't catch me contradicting myself between what I say at the deposition and at trial. They're dumbfounded. No idea how they could have effed this up this badly. Turns out there were two legal teams, one defending against ABC's lawsuit and another trying to scare people away from talking SH about the company on the internet by indiscriminately suing their critics. They don't communicate with each other, and the one team didn't mention to the other team that they would be suing a key witness in their case. Thank you for listening.